Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells Europe here at Hanover Fairground in the year of 2023. I welcome you to come and have a seat, relax our interesting topics and also have a drink. It's on the house. Please also welcome with me our online guests. Hello, ni hao, konnichiwa, bienvenidos, all the languages I know. Um, welcome to our online screen. We are live streaming from the fair. We are discussing green hydrogen. Um, I'm happy that we're discussing green hydrogen. I have a speaker for that to discuss a roadmap to scaling up green hydrogen production in Europe. For that, please welcome with me on stage Head of Central and Eastern European Business at Life, Mr. Luc Gare. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a big pleasure for me to be here and to introduce you live, uh, to explain also to you what our status today is of development. Life was founded in 2017 in, uh, in Nantes, and Nantes is a, a city in the west of, uh, of France, not far away from the Atlantic Ocean, uh, in 2017. And it uh, took us just until November 2019 to get the first seed financing round. That was uh, 12 million euro, which is uh, quite an amount of money for uh, a startup company at that time. And the only thing what we had was a PowerPoint presentation with a vision, nothing else to show them. Because of course, our intention is to become a producer of green hydrogen. So to invest and uh, to own assets to generate uh, green hydrogen by using renewable energy and to sell this hydrogen to off-takers, which could be in mobility, but could also be in the industry, in the steel and the glass industry. So in 2019, November 2019, seed financing, and I've had several A series, B series, and C series, like you have them, them actually. And it took us also just until the year after, and that was in May 23rd of uh, last year, that we made it to have our IPO at the Euronext uh, stock exchange market in, uh, in Paris. So today you can find us uh, on a ticker live. Uh, we have a market capitalization from around 350 to 400 million euro. It's a little bit going up and down because that is how the stock exchange market, unfortunately today, is going down. But that is where you can find more information also about us. And as I said, we are a producer of uh, green hydrogen. Now, many are making big announcements, etc., and sometimes they have the feeling that the oil and gas industry, classicals, or let us say the energy, uh, large uh, energy companies, they are making big announcements, announcing letter of intent, MOUs. Sometimes the feeling we are living in the letter of intent or MOU business, what we do here, actually. That's the only thing. No, we really aim to realize something, and that's what we all are aiming at. But some are, let us say, looking to 2035, 2040, etc. We believe we need to tackle the problem from climate change today, and we cannot wait for to make big plans somewhere in 2035. So therefore, we are also one of the only ones with these 200 people we have today, because today we are with 200 people. Again, in the short time, actually, we went on from, like I said, the seed financing, getting the stock exchange market, 200 people to focus only on green hydrogen. 50 of them are engineers, which can make a basic design of a plant. And with these kind of people, we were able last year, no, it was two years ago already, sorry, two years ago, to inaugurate our first plant. So we built already a plant, and that is operational in France. That is small. We are producing 300 kilograms per day there. And what is unique on this plant is that we are directly connected to three wind turbines, not fire the grid, but a direct connection. And the other worldwide unique thing is that we are using the seawater to make hydrogen out of these. So we do first desalinization, further purification, and then it goes in the electrolyzer dam. So this is small because we believe it makes sense to start small, to learn actually then, before thinking about to scale up further. And what we do there is, this is on one side an R&D center, but it's also a purpose of commercial. So we are already selling here hydrogen to customers. We have three off-takers. One is a hydrogen refueling station in the region there. The other is uh, for the buses from the Vendée, because they have some hydrogen buses. And the third one is Lidl. They have a warehouse depot there, and they have forklifts running on hydrogen. And we supply them weekly with the hydrogen which they need to run these forklifts on. 
So therefore, we start already experimenting what does it mean to deliver hydrogen, how to manage a, the whole uh, value chain to there. And so also, we are bringing the hydrogen by tube trailers to customers. So we are currently also further uh, increasing massively our fleet of uh, tube trailers in order, let us say, the ambition which I am going to immediately explain to make this happen in the very short term. We have announced at the stock exchange market, or the capital market, that we want to become the leading hydrogen producer in Europe. And for this purpose, we have made a three-phase plan. The first phase is to be able, by the end of 25, to deliver in every corner in Germany, but also Netherlands and Belgium, green hydrogen. So that is a hard commitment, and that's what we are working on. And for this purpose, we build up a network of about six to seven plants all over the country, and then in a circle of 180, 200 kilometers around town, within this circle, we are going to deliver the hydrogen by tube trailer to the customer dam. Because why do we do this? We see already today with our discussions at end customers in the steel and the glass industry and other chemical industry, etc., that there is an immediate need for green hydrogen in smaller quantities, but not, let us say, the big quantities which can come later. And that is what we would like to fulfill to those customers then, that we will be able, by a tube trailer then, to supply already green hydrogen to them. So the first plant of this is coming in Schwäbisch Gmünd, as we have announced last year, 10 megawatt. Uh, there is also one going to come in Herzogen Aurach, that was announced just before Christmas last year. I will see also plants coming around Bremen Oldenburg will come 10 megawatt. In Northern Westphalia will come 10 megawatt. In Sachsen will come 20 megawatt. In Northern Westphalia, by the way, 20 megawatt, not 10 megawatt. Then. So that is the network which we are building up and uh, which gets operational during 24 and 25. Then at a certain point, and that is 26, 27, there will be big parts already ready from the hydrogen backbone here in Germany, but also in other countries like in the Netherlands also. And then we will be having big plants, what we call XXL plants, operational in the north of the country, where the offshore energy is coming on land. So we, we connect to those substations uh, because of that reason, to avoid some uh, congestion from, from too much electricity there. And of course, a proximity to the hydrogen backbone. So one of them we have announced last year, which is coming in Groningen, province of Groningen, Netherlands, 200 megawatt but also in the north of Germany, we are developing really massively several hundreds of megawatt big plants, which will come operational as soon as the hydrogen backbone is available. And now for us, the third phase, and that is the third phase of this roadmap, which I'm explaining here now, is when we go offshore. We believe very strong in producing hydrogen offshore, and I will explain immediately a little bit more about this. So this is the location in, uh, in Groningen, where we will be uh, building a 200 megawatt plant. We are sitting there, on the one side is sitting Dow Chemicals, and just beside, uh, we are uh, uh, developing our plant, which will get operational by the end of 26. We will be having our first plant in Germany in January operational, and that is in Tübingen. Uh, we will be with the one megawatt electrolyzed, that's small, but okay, you have to start small before you can go big and we will be producing hydrogen for this hydrogen train from Siemens Mobility, which will be running beginning next year from Tübingen, direction Passau. And they will be producing then every, year, uh, every day the hydrogen which these trains uh, requires. That is an agreement which we have with uh, DB Energy. Now we come to the topic offshore. Why producing hydrogen offshore? What is the idea behind this? First of all, what we have in the south of Europe, which is lots of solar irradiation, we have here in, uh, in the north and the west, which is wind energy. You see there on the left picture, lots of massive uh, wind energy. It is as dark as the solar energy which Egypt might be bringing actually done. That is really the potential actually. And you know also the plans from the German government, but also from the Dutch government, the Irish, the Scottish, all of them would like to see in the next years to come another 60 to 70 gigawatt of offshore wind capacity built extra. Today we have in Germany 8 gigawatt offshore wind capacity and the German government wants to add another 60 gigawatt. Now, 
What is important from saying hydrogen is an important part, it will not go without hydrogen. And as this slide, two times a factor 10, which you can keep in mind. The first factor 10 is that the pipe is 10 times cheaper than the cable for electricity. And the other 10 factor is that the energy density from hydrogen is 10 times bigger than the electricity. And I give you really a very practical example. In Germany, we're already years discussing how can we bring the energy made by offshore wind from the north, maybe two, three gigawatt, to the south, all the way to Bavaria. There's Nordlink and Südlink, etc. Big discussion because lots of farmers do not want to give their land for an overhead line, and cities are complaining, etc. Very complex situation done. Now, there has been an announcement from Gasgate with this hydrogen pipe called Flow that is today a natural gas pipe, which is going in the east from Germany, operated by Omtras today and partly by Gasgate. And this pipe will be refurbished to be used for hydrogen. And this project is called Flow. You can uh, Google on this. This pipe will be able to carry the equivalent of 20 gigawatt of electrolyzer capacity. So, so, so now you understand, Somedan, years discussing to bring two, three gigawatt to the south, and in one shot, with just refurbishing a natural gas pipe to hydrogen carrying them, we can bring 20 gigawatt to the south. And that's exactly also the point with offshore wind. We have big challenges to bring this eight gigawatt of offshore wind production to land. We have issues with congestion. We know even substations operate in the north of Germany where 60% of the electricity is actually to be congested. They have to switch it off, actually, done. It's the 60%. So it's a huge problem, this congestion. And therefore, by making hydrogen on the sea already, because the new wind parks will come very far away, even up to 250, 250 kilometers away from the coast, we will see uh, wind parks coming down to produce already there the hydrogen to bring it by pipe on the sea in the backbone. And that is the way how to carry the energy from new offshore wind all the way down into country to the south. So beside the role of mobility, heavy duty vehicles, etc., buses, etc., but also decarbonization in industry, in the glass, in the steel industry, hydrogen, green hydrogen, has a reason of existence as an energy carrier to bring energy over long distances into the country. It doesn't mean that we have to bring it again to electricity. No, because hydrogen as itself can also immediately be used, actually, then. So that is the purpose. Now, in order to make that possible, and then I'll finish here, we were the first in the world last year to make a pilot, to show in a pilot to produce hydrogen on the sea. We have acquired this platform, which is already a couple of years old. That is in the, in the Atlantic Ocean in France, a location called SEMREF. You can Google on this. We have removed these solar panels on the top. And what we have done is we have put it in the port of Saint Nazaire, and we have put a one megawatt electrolyzer that is a container in the middle down. On the right side, you see some containers for the electricity. Uh, which is a direct connection with the wind turbine. And on the left side, you have the desalinization and the control container. That is what we have inaugurated last year. It's still in Saint Nazaire, in the port. But in May, so next month, when the Atlantic Ocean is getting more quiet, because now there are big waves, 15 to 20 meter waves, etc. But next uh, month, it's getting more quiet. And now we will pull this again in the sea, and we will connect this directly to this wind turbine, being the first in the world showing how to produce green hydrogen on the sea. It's just a test. It's to understand what is the impact on the material, how can we do maintenance, et cetera, then, and, and, and how with the direct connection, et cetera. So that's the only purpose on what we do there. But it's an important test before moving on and scaling up. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very sorry we are out of time, but thank you so much thank you. for having you here. Please, if you have questions, take them directly to Luke or to his booth. Um, at life. Thank you so much. Thank you.